Hi. In this video, I'm going to be creating an installer for my application called Password Verifier. It's an application that was recycled from uh, last year's COP1000 class. Uh, it's just working code. It's just something to get me started in order to demonstrate the process involved in distributing a Windows Forms application to another PC that doesn't have Visual Studio. So the goal is to set up, to copy all of the files necessary to execute this program on another machine that doesn't have any of the source code involved. So <clears throat> just real quick, uh, this program reads information from a text file uh, at, to give a list of accounts, and that list of accounts contains information about whether a user is authorized to uh, access this administrator tool. Um, I set the program up to launch this readme because at the bottom it shows the uh, the username and password required. This one's an administrator account, this one is a uh, non-administrator account, and you can kind of see the difference. But in order for the software to work, not only do you have to have the executable for the program, but you have to have that list of accounts text file, the readme file, uh, the about text, which is uh, something that's launched from the help menu inside the application itself, and uh, and then the log.txt file, uh, which keeps track of the output of the software. So if I log in as an administrator, uh, you can see that it, it's able to read my account name from the text file, and uh, it was able to populate the other users as well. Uh, because I was able to read that. So this is the account list and the format that it's in there. Uh, the true and false boolean is whether or not you have administrative privileges. Administrative privileges gets you this management window where you can actually go in and edit, remove a user. You can even set them as uh, an administrator or not. A non-administrator would simply see a warning not really a warning, but uh, just a prompt that just says, you know, you're not approved yet, and so go pack. So in order for this to work correctly on another machine, not only do you have to have the executable, you have to have those text files, like I said. So we're going to start my installation project by clicking the solution up here at the top, and I'm going to add a new project. This project is another project type, it's, I'm going to choose a Visual Studio installer. Now I can do a setup wizard which would allow me to go through and have Visual Studio prompt me for certain things that I wanted to include, but I'm going to do this uh, the hard way, as it were, and go through each step manually. So I'm going to name my solution, and it's going to live in the same place as the other one. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, while this is highlighted, I'm going to go through and I'm going to change some of these default choices. So the author is myself and not Hewlett Packard. Um, the installer will look to see if the program is already installed. Like if I build again, I'm going to have a, a new version release. Uh, it'll look to see if the version is there. Uh, this is a choice to see whether or not the user wants to install it just for themselves or for everyone and then I can uh, just set the default basically so if I leave this alone it's going to say false which means it's just going to be for for me just for me when I install and that's okay because I'm going to leave that alone the manufacturer is not Hewlett Packard I'm going to change that to Bush Software and I'm going to leave the URL off because I don't have my own website uh, the product name is fine uh, if it did detect up here detect a newer version, uh, this can determine whether or not the installer is going to remove the other one first. Otherwise, the user would get a message that says that they have to go to add remove programs to remove the old one uh, before they can continue and the installation will exit. Um, I can put in a little phone number, some extra information, uh, just to kind of identify myself, including a little description that this is a sample setup exe build and uh, so there's that <clears throat> now the installer is going to copy files onto the machine that runs the executable 
and the first thing that it needs is going to have to have the, the files necessary to run. So here I'm going to add the project output. The project output of this project is the executable. So uh, this is the DLL or EXE built by the project, that's right, so I want the primary output. I also want to add some more files. Like I said, the uh, application only works if it has access to some of these text files and the three of them, four of them that I need is this readme which uh, gives instructions at the beginning for how to log into the thing, the log of the system actions uh, during the execution, uh, the list of accounts which uh, gives people permission to get to that management page and then the about text uh, which is what the user sees when they uh, click help about within the application window itself. Um, and some of these other things here are adding the ability to uh, to put additional files like if I want to go to the user's desktop and during the installation I want to create a shortcut. I'm going to name this after my software <coughs> and um, this basically just says that uh, it's always going to create a shortcut in the desktop. I think if I didn't say that it would um, it would prompt the user during the, uh, the installation wizard. So in the programs menu, unlike the desktop, I'm not just going to put a shortcut, I need to add a folder first. Um, I'm actually going to name this push software. And then I'm going to do a shortcut. And these are just the three defaults, the application, user desktop, user programs menu, but if I want it to also go into like the user start menu, then I need to add that first. And I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to add another folder, push software, and then I'm going to make a shortcut to my executable. And there we go. Now. This one, I'm also going to make sure that it always creates, just to make sure everything is cool. And I'm going to save my solution, and I'm going to try to build it, starting with the solution, and then I'm going to build this uh, project. Uh, I may get a warning here in a minute that the uh, .NET target is, yeah, the .NET framework does not match the difference. Um, I don't remember exactly where the setting is, but I think I can just choose any. And if I rebuild this, then it should be okay. Because I don't, I don't think any of my code does require a specific .NET framework. Uh, and now it's happy, so I could have tried to figure out what my audience is and then switch the version to match that, but uh, in this particular case it's not that big of a deal and so uh, it's, it's cool. And Visual Studio helped me when I clicked my error, it, it took me to this uh, properties box, which is something I, I didn't really remember where it was, so thank you Visual Studio. Uh, launch conditions, so. Alright, now that build took me into the debug of this password verifier. And so these, this is the result of my build from that project. And from here, I should be able to launch the executable just to see how it works on this machine. Um, here's my choice. I'm going to leave it as just me. This is the part where I change the manufacturer. And this, of course, is the name of my project. I'm going to continue, and it's ready. Got my shortcut here to my desktop. I should have a folder, Bush software, that might be left over from an initial one. I've, I practiced this before I did the video, so um, so that's in there. And then if I go into computer, 
and I look under x86, I've got my stuff. So all of those are there. I launch my shortcut, <coughs> and we'll see if the application runs correctly. All right, my readme copied correctly, and it was able to read from the account.txt and uh, populate the list. And there's my help about. So everything is working the way it is supposed to, which means I have a successful setup file that I can deploy now to. Uh, to anybody who wants to have a silly password management system. So thank you for your time, and goodbye.